Hi everybody, it's Karen Sullivan here, and I've got a few minutes before we're starting the seminar, The Truth on Soy, and if you'd like to um, let your friends know that we're starting this evening and going to share some things about soy, and uh, you can get them, and so those of you that are here, I see, thanks very much for joining us in this webinar, for getting yourselves set in. We have a couple questions. If you have anything to ask me, there's Q and A's that we have in a little bit, and I'll try to answer them afterward. I won't be able to answer them during the program. Okay. So if you'll just hold for a second and then we'll be starting shortly. Okay. Thank you. Great, 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 great. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Okay, I see Jennifer's here. Good. I got your question today. And as a matter of fact, it's I will be answering it. Perfect. Thank you. This is the first uh, webinar that Life Health More is offering. And um, so I'm excited. It's kind of neat. A lot of, a lot of tech going on here. So I'll do my very best to bring this to you with um, nary a hitch, right? <laughs> Good, thank you. Okay. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Karen Sullivan and I am with lifehealthmore.net and I'm a personal trainer. I happen to live near St. Louis now, but I used to live on the, on the East Coast in Virginia in Williamsburg. And I have been a personal trainer for 25 years and I am a fitness instructor and here in St. Louis I work and do I teach classes as well as do personal training one-on-one -on -one. and so I'm bringing to you all kinds of information if you want to become part of the advanced training that I have at lifehealthmore.net just go to that web page and you'll be able to subscribe and get the advanced training that is not available on Facebook or YouTube on either of my channels it's only through there and those things are sent to your um, to your home email, and so that way you can do it at your leisure and take the uh, you know take the time to watch the videos and read the posts and things that I send to you, and then you'll also get the blogs that I send out. So I'm hopeful that in 2018 I want to make as many people as possible as healthy as they can be, so they can become the best version of themselves. Okay. So let's see, it is now um, 6.58 and I think I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that we can go ahead. There we go. Great. Good, good, good. All righty. So this way everybody will realize this is where you are, the truth about soy, the beautiful fields of soybeans. Okay. So the fact of the matter is soy is king of controversial foods. Absolutely. People are just blown away by the fact that there's so much conflict about whether you should or shouldn't eat it. And we're going to touch on that today. Now, the forms of soy are like tofu, soy milk, miso. Then you have um, a long reputation of those foods being healthy. And there are actually more scare tactics that come from studies and medical professionals than any other food source. There are statements like eating soy is um, going to mess up your hormones and your thyroid or soy can cause cancer, especially if you've already had breast cancer before. Also, they'll say, you know, like soy can make your medication not work. Well, we're going to touch on that a little bit with some studies and show some information and try to get you to understand where it is. So which side is right? Actually, the answers are not clear, pro or con, one way or the other. It's a little distressing to go on the internet and read it. So bottom line, if you have a thyroid issue, you need to make sure you go to your doctor, okay? So here we are, lifehealthmore.net, Karen Sullivan, and we're doing the truth about soy. So as a couple of you have come in um, again to join me, 
thank you, welcome. And let's go into the topic again is the reputation of soy we're going to talk about today and the health benefits. And there are some concerns that I have and I want to share with you information about the um, soy and from the affiliate program that I am involved with, which is Shackley Corporation and some of the research that they've done. And I've done a lot of delving into and talking to people in Shackley Science. So that's what I'm bringing to you. Now, why is soy so controversial? You know, I mean, why is it? It's been around for quite a while. Truly, truly. The emperor in 2853 BC, Emperor Sheng Nun was the first person to start, you know, implementing it and, and getting soy. And I think they fed they fed it to animals, but then they also people ate it themselves. In the in 1900, the U.S. Department of Agriculture recommended that it be grown in this country for animal feed, and the marketplace decided they wanted a they wanted a fat free protein source, and that happened in the 90s, 1990s. So you know it's quite a while it was around before everybody started thinking about using it for human consumption in this country. Now here's where it starts to get tricky. What happened was experts saw that traditionally in China and in Asia that the people there consumed a lot of soy. It is a staple in the diet. And that the, in those countries, they had lower obesity, they had lower um, uh, heart disease and also lower cancer. Well, they thought, well, if they can do it, we can too. That's a wonderful thing. Well, what they were looking at is association not causation. And that's not science. They didn't look at the problem was that they didn't look at other factors that remain. There are genetics involved in, in having a whole civilization, a whole country that has this certain propensity to be healthier and have less breast cancer, lower obesity. And you know what? Their lifestyle was very different than Americans and the rest of their diet, not tofu is just part of it. The rest of the diet in Asia is very different than in the United States, okay? Now, if you think about soy, let's go back to the things that I have understood about soy here in this country, okay? Now, the effects of soy were first measured in showing that in nature and watching birds and recognizing that they changed foliage and they matured um, and were very young and had a uh, slowed down metabolism, okay? And the observations also understood that there was an anti-triosine property in raw soybeans. Now, what does that mean? Well, what it is, is actually, it's an amino acid substance and it actually blocks and inhibits the um, thyroid from being able to work. Now, in some places I've heard people talk about taking that triazine to help with their uh, hyperthyroidism and bring their thyroid down. And that's something that only an endocrinologist can do. I don't even think that you can buy this amino acid. And if you can, don't take a chance on it because the endocrine system is really intricate. You do not want to go there. But having that and cooking these soybeans, it ends up that it denatures the compounds. Well, the first person to notice this really, and the studies that were done in this country were by Dr. Forrest Shackley, who is the man who started the company that I am affiliated with. And he saw these observations first in the birds and in nature, and he recognized the way in China that they worked with the soy. There is a process called a mallard reaction that when you cook the um, food, it actually denatures it and it turns it into something completely different. And so the Chinese would take the tofu, which was a water extracted process that made this soy curd, and they would eat it right away. When the, once it was turned and denatured with the cold water, they would eat it. It wasn't stored. They didn't give it time that it would change and flip over into becoming something different, okay? Shackley did the research and worked with the cold water extraction 30 years ago. And Shackley started doing that cold water extraction even before anybody recognized that there was a problem with 
the soy and being extracted the way it was being used. Now, Dr. Mark Messina, research and phenomenal man, 20 years, he's the executive director of the Soy Nutrition Institute. He is a renowned, probably the most world-renowned expert and studies the effects of soy. 20 years he's been doing it, has 60 published scientific papers and has given more than 500 presentations on soy and the health benefits. And he happens to be part of the Shackley team. Now the straight talk about soy here, okay. Soy beans are unique among all the legumes, truly, truly. They are higher in fiber, okay, and they have lower fat than other beans. No, wait a minute, take that back. Higher in fiber and fat than in other beans and lower in carbohydrate. The fat is omega-3 and omega-6. What do we need in our bodies? What are we told that we need in our diets? And it's comparable to the cholesterol lowering benefits that you get in oat bran. Same thing. So it's, I think the deduction then is drawing the conclusion that oat bran will lower the cholesterol, therefore soybeans do too, because it's the same, it's like the same thing product and they're both plant, correct? All right. Carbohydrate in the soy also can act as a probiotic that stimulates healthy bacteria in the colon. It's a good source of vitamin B and potassium and iron and sometimes calcium. Great product, truly. Now, what we know today, what we understand today is that soy does not increase the risk for breast cancer, all right? There were studies that were done and they went through and the PLOS one meta did one PLOS one did a meta analysis of 35 different studies and looked across the board and found that soy consumption and breast cancer risk were totally unrelated. Okay, Tufts University did a study in 2017 that showed that toy soy consumption is not problematic for people who currently have breast cancer. And it does not make drugs like tamoxifen less effective. Now that's an important thing for people to recognize. The high fiber in soy can be beneficial for the colon and therefore the conclusions suggest in these studies that it provides support for the gastrointestinal cancers. It will help to keep the colon cleansed. It's not saying that it, that it cures cancer, but it keeps the colon clear and so that you don't have, you don't have problems with backups and those sorts of things, okay? Now, isoflavones, soy isoflavones, and they are classified as plant-derived compounds that are known as phytoestrogens. Now, people hear that word estrogen, and often they're concerned that, oh dear, it's estrogen, and when you take estrogen for, you know, um, for uh, hormone support that they're believing that that's what causes breast cancer. Therefore, soy causes breast cancer. See where I'm going with that? It's not the same. It's a plant derived. It's, it's, not, it's not a hormone, okay? So that's where, that's where the fallacy happens in, in that. And um, so, have no fear. It is not something. It does, however, show that there's potential benefits for um, protection with cardiovascular disease. We're talking because it's got the omegas in there, which is good for cardiovascular, correct? And it also uh, can help with osteoporosis where it's got calcium in it. And it's hormone dependent cancer and loss of cognitive function. It can help us with that. And it's an antioxidant, okay? Now, here we go to look at the top phytoestrogen, phytoestrogen foods. That's a big word. It's hard to say. And look at the top of the list, soybeans and soy products. And we got tempeh and sesame seeds, lentils, jasmine oil, which I've never had that at all, carrots, alfalfa, pomegranates, wheat germ, hops, bourbon, which cracked me up, and beer. I had to put that down in there. And uh, red clover is just among a few of the things. Now I put at the very bottom of the screen, menopause balance complex. So when we're talking about the support for um, 
there's soy in the menopause balance and black cohosh and those things that help to support the endocrine system during the time when we're in, you know, the menopausal ages. And so uh, this is a pro I will testify to that. My menopause balance complex kept me going through that phase of my life. I never had a hot flash. I never had night sweats. I never had the mood swings. That's kind of a part of my personality anyway, but uh, that never happened because of menopause. And that product I attribute to, that's why, because it had such an incredible support for my system. It was phenomenal, okay? Now, I have Hashimoto's disease. I know a lot of people do. Uh, I have a niece that has it. And so dealing with that, it means that your thyroid is hypo, which is kind of a hard thing. Hyper is the one where there's too much. Hypo is where there's not enough or there's nothing. And I have been monitoring my thyroid for 49 years. Now, you would think after 49 years, I would have it together. But I had forgotten about the four-hour rule. And this is something I want to say to people who might have an issue with thyroid and they're worried about their, you know, wanting to use soy in their diet. Um, Shackley has a bunch of soy. Soy was in many products because it's such a wonderful product. Uh, it's just a wonderful product. It's a wonderful plant to, to add for support to the body. Now, the, the absorption issue is, is easily taken care of when you do, when you monitor and have the four hour rule. I was reminded by a client that um, she said something about, well, it's so busy and my day is so busy. And I take my thyroid in the morning and I don't take my multiple vitamin and my calcium until four hours later. And all of a sudden I thought, oh my gosh, I totally forgot it. And turned out when I had my TSH, T4, T3 checked by my doctor, it, they found that when I started taking it correctly, they were able to reduce my thyroid medication. Great. And it's Synthroid is what I take. Okay. Now there are studies that contradict contradict each other regarding um, soy and thyroid conditions. And sadly, the people just write off the benefits of soy because of that. But ask your doctor. And I think that perhaps the four hour rule might apply that you can do something and finagle it in that way. Don't just write soy off because you think that you're afraid of what it'll do. It's not going to be an instantaneous thing. It, and um, talk to your doctor. Okay. Talk to your doctor. Not all the fluff that's out there on the internet. Don't make up your mind, get a medical opinion. Okay. Now, when you are using um, soy products, okay. And you're buying things like, I know that they have soy burgers and there's all kinds of products out there. And sometimes there are um, salad dressings and different things that have like a soy miso base or whatever. Okay. The important thing to remember is that you want to have a soy quality control checklist. Okay. So, only buy the products. And if you have to call the company, if you can't get answers from them, hang up. Okay. Look elsewhere. You want to make sure they have these seven points. The beans must be organic, organically grown. The beans cannot be genetically engineered. No GMOs. Each batch needs to be checked to confirm that it contains the nine essential amino acids and the manufacturing process uh, must be to, in order to make the soy isolate, they have to use the crushed soy flakes have to be water washed, not alcohol washed. Alcohol wash is the easy way out. It takes less time and it's cheaper and that's what they'll do, but it does not do the process correctly. You will not have a healthy product as a result. Okay. The anti-thyroid and anti-growth substance must be removed and it will only be removed in a water washed process, okay? Cold water wash, no heat, okay? Process without heat. The soy isolate needs to have calcium added to it because when the oil is removed from the being washed, the food becomes acidic. And so calcium added to it, it becomes neutral again. Now, these seven steps are the things to make sure that anything else that you're buying 
is going to be healthy for you. The good news is the Shackley products follow all of this. They've been doing it for 30 years. Dr. Shackley made sure that it was done this way. So you'd be okay using any of the problem products. Now, don't try to target your health problems. We're talking about a lot about thyroid today and the soy and how that interacts in your body or the colon and you're wanting to cleanse your colon, whatever it is. It's really good idea to make sure that you are worried about and, and focus on overall health first instead of saying, you know, that's what, that's what medicine does is they say, you know, I have this ache and pain and so they give you a pill for that ache and pain. And then you have side effects that cause something else in your body, maybe dizziness. And so they give you another pill for the dizziness instead of backing off the ache and pain medicine. And so don't go for a quick fix, go for an overall healthy, healthy body, okay? There are two ways that you can do it. One would be to take a 20 question assessment best thing I have ever seen in my 25 years of working. And if you go to lifehealthmore.myshackley.com, then you can take this health print and then you and I can discuss it and, you know, make sure you leave me your contact information so that we can talk. And you can also be proactive and you can get one of, make a commitment to get a starter program that has the nine amino acids that you need, vitamins, minerals, probiotics, probiotics that are so crucial. And Shackley has three plans, the life plan, the vitalizing and the essentials plan. All of it's guaranteed. You have nothing to lose, but your poor health. It'll help to build better health because if it doesn't work, if you don't feel better, you will get your money back. No questions asked. Okay. And that's also at lifehealthmore.myshackley.com. Okay. Now, why am I so ecstatic about this company? Because 100 years ago, this company started with Dr. Forrest Shackley, and he founded the company. He, after a lifetime of his own, um, his own business, he was a chiropractor, fantastic man. As a young boy, he was involved in working out in nature. Well, he sort of went out in nature. His mother and his mother's friends used to send him out to collect herbs as a kid. And so they would use it for poultices and things. And, and that's when he began to understand and recognize, recognize that nature had just a real symbiotic relationship with each other. Everything sort of was interrelated and, and to get to the, the crux of things in life was to go back to nature. In 1915, he invented vitalized minerals. It was the first mineral uh, vitamin that was in this country. And since then, the company has kept the highest standards, the golden rule. And that's the man that has brought health and wholeness to a lot of people that I know. Okay. Now, because of the earth friendly thing, absolutely. He, in 1960, Dr. Shackley came out when Shackley Corporation came out with a product that was the first natural, healthy, earth-friendly cleaner, Basic H. And that was in 1960. And since then, the product line has grown and there are a lot of things getting all the toxins and everything out of your home. When you do laundry, did you know that there are chemicals in those laundry detergents that are carcinogenic? True fact. So when your clothes are washed and then they're rinsed, not everything comes out. My mother used to work in a lab for the state of Delaware. And they had, um, when they washed and cleaned up beakers and things, they did uh, three times that they rinsed and washed and rinsed and washed before they were sure that whatever chemical was in the beaker was out of the beaker. Now, your washer, washing machine doesn't do that. And um, fabric holds onto what has been put into it. So you use a chemical laden laundry detergent, then the chemicals are in the clothes, the clothes against your skin and your skin is the largest organ in the body and it absorbs it. So think about that and getting clean and getting healthy. My compulsion and my compassion is because of Shackley. I've been um, selling product and using it since the 60s, selling it since the 80s. And it's been a great way to understand 
the reality and the science. And, you know, I'm one of these people that has to see answers. Shackley does the science that makes me happy. <laughs> Over 100,000 quality tests are done each year to make sure that those products will be safe for your family. They screen every single bio botanical ingredient for 350 pesticides, contaminants, heavy metals, residual solvents, irradiation, and microbial contamination. It actually exceeds the USP, um, US Pharmacopoeia, by 250 tests. So the government is saying you should have 100 tests. Shackley does two, 250 more, okay? It is 126 scientific papers that are published in peer-reviewed journals and pr are presented at scientific meetings around the world. And if you were to observe the Shackley scientists at work, there are biologists, nutritionists, food scientists, microbiologists, analytical chemi chemists, and on and on. And you'd be overwhelmed with the scrutiny that each product goes through. There is um, Elizabeth Blackburn, who is working in, with the labs in Shackley, and she is the Nobel laureate who discovered telomeres on the ends of the DNA. She's just one of the people that is involved there. Everything is, is safe. It's proven to be effective and it's guaranteed. It's designed in harmony with nature. And I hope that sometime you would love to hear about what I do and learn more about it. Why I Shackley? Well, I have seen remarkable results incorporating Shackley Nutrition into my client's personal training. And it gives me a second stream of income creates more comfortable life for my family while I'm able to do what I am so passionate about. I hope that you recognize that health is not expensive. It's priceless. Take the time to try to do something for yourself. And if you have questions, please write to me at lifehealthmore.net, Karen at lifehealthmore.net, and I can answer questions. I'd love to get you started. And Thank you a lot for joining me today. I really appreciate you very much. Take care.